Okay, everyone, welcome to this this video. Um, okay, in a previous video, I showed that for this special case where your sample consists of only two draws, um, that the that the variance of your sample proportion, which is just x1 plus x2 over 2 in the case of two draws, is going to be equal to the variance of the random variable divided by 2. So I want to show that that's true uh, in general, uh, irrespective of your sample size, and that's going to be the purpose of this video. So there's a few things that we need to see and agree upon before that, which will make that proof go a lot more smoothly. Uh, one is that the expected value of x squared is equal to the proportion and that the expected value of the two of two iid random variables multiplied together is going to be equal to p squared okay so this is all assuming that that we're in a a bernoulli random variable setting so we're just drawing um, we're just taking an instantiation of a random variable that has a certain uh, probability of being true. We call that the, the population proportion P. So this would be like in a coin flip, P would be equal to 0.5. We flip a coin once, um, and if it's uh, heads, we're going to call that a 1, and the chances of that happening are P. If it's a 0, chances of that are going to be 1 minus P or Q, in this case also equal to 0.5. So this is like the kind of scenario that we're talking about. Um, Okay, so let's get on with, let's prove this. The, fir the first lemma, uh, we'll, we'll just very, very quickly show that this is true. The expected value of x squared is by definition the sum, this is for the discrete case, of x squared p of x. Okay, well, this is a very straightforward computation. Um, our possible values for x, sorry, over all values of x. Okay, so this would just be 0 squared times q plus 1 squared times p, which is equal to p. Done. Okay. Now in this case, it's it's a bit it's a bit trickier. We would say that by definition, um, if x if our x's are independent, we can write that this is equal to the sum of the products of x a x b times their joint probability. So times the probability of x a and x b. Okay. So, in our situation, what are the possible outcomes for xA and xB? Well, we could have uh, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, or 1, 1. Now, note that in all of these cases, the product of xA, xB is going to be 0, except in the case where they're both 1. In which case, our answer is just 1 times the probability of each of them happening uh, together, which is just p squared. OK, so our, our lemmas check out. Now we can get on with the fun part. Now I know I said I'm going to do this generally, and I w I'm going to prove the general result. But I need to appeal to our, our intuition when it comes to counting. Um, for the case where n equals 3. So here's what I want to do. I want to define a random variable to be an instantiation of x three times, sorry, whoo, and then this is all going to be divided by 3. Okay, so we want to talk about the variance of this guy, and this this is going to be like a p hat or a, a sample proportion on three draws. Okay, so we know that the variance of y is just going to be equal to the expected value 
of y squared minus the expected value of y. Uh, maybe, maybe, it, maybe my third lemma should have been, and you can see this in, in my other video if you don't believe me, but the expected value of this sample proportion, um, basically the, the one third comes out of the expected value and then you're just taking three expectations of the random variable itself, which is 3p. So it's 3p over 3, which is just p. Um, anyhow, this is our definition of the variance of y. So we're going to work forward from here. We know that we can just call this p squared, and that's going to we're going to hang on to that until the end. This is the term that we have to do some work with. Okay, so this guy is the expected value of x1 plus x2 plus x3 over 3, and all of that's squared. Again, like I'm just working with this term, so everything I'm going to write is we're going to bring these guys back in at the end. Okay, so when we square this out, we know that in the denominator we're going to get 3 squared. Um, and we can take that out of the expected value. So we're just going to call this. And at this point, we can make our first generalization, which is whatever the number in our sample was, whether it was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's going to get squared and come out. So we can say that this is 1 over n squared expected value of whatever. Now over here I just want to show you what happens when we square this out. x1 plus x2 plus x3 times x1 plus x2 plus x3. Okay, so for each term we'll get a squared term. x1 squared and then we'll get how many x, how many multiplications of the iid variables. We get x1, x2, and then plus x2, sorry, x1, x3. So we're going to get this plus, and then we would get x2 squared plus x2, x1 plus x2, x3, plus we get x3, sorry, I'm having trouble with my threes today, plus x3, x1, plus x3, x2. <sighs> okay, so what we want to see here, this is, this is where the, the magic happens. Um, how many of these squared guys do we get? We get three of them. So since we know that x is is ident I, <laughs> iid identical uh, independent identically distributed, we know that we would get like three. We can just pretend that it's all all the same. So we could say it's like because they're gonna have x1 squared will have the same value as x2 squared. So we can just say it's 3x1 squared plus, and how many of these types of things do we get? We get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6, just call it x1, x2. Okay, and this is where we want to make a generalization. The reason that we got three of these is because there were three x's in our sample. So we can effectively say that this is n. And then where does this 6 come from? Okay, well in general what would happen is we know that we have three things in each set here. One of them is going to get taken away as a squared term, and we're going to have two left. And we're going to do that for each of the three. So instead of saying six, we could call it n times n minus one, 
the n minus 1 being because one of these is going to get removed from this like set of straight multiplications because it's going to create a squared term. Okay, and we'll just generalize that to xA, xB as we did in our, our little lemma up here. So now, now we're just about home free. We get 1 over n squared. The expected value, as we know, distributes. So we would get n times the expected value of x squared, which we said is p, plus n times n minus 1, which is a constant expected value of xa, xb, which is p squared. Okay, what do we want to do with this? Well, we can distribute our n squared into each of these. and we get a cancellation of one of the n's with the n squared. So to clean this up a little, get, little bit, we get pn plus do we want to distribute this yet? No, I don't think so. We're just going to leave it as n minus 1 p squared over n and now we're going to bring in our p squared that was over here and we're just going to call it n p squared over n so that we've got common common factors here now the next thing I want to do is take just this piece and we're going to factor out the p squared. So what we're going to forget about the p over n for a second and we're just going to say p squared times, now we've got n minus 1 minus n all over n. Okay, well n minus n is gone p squared times minus 1 is minus p squared. So we're left with, we're going to bring this back in, p minus p squared over n, which is equal to, of course, p times 1 minus p over n, which is equal to p q over n, which is equal to the variance of x over n. And this is what we wish to demonstrate. Okay, thank you very much for joining me. I hope to see you all again next time.